I'm Laura Madden. Welcome to Refashion Art. And this is where a lot of the refashion art lives at my home, on the walls of my home. So I hope you guys have a cocktail. This is our happy hour tonight, and I do hope you will join me. Um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I just want to go through some of the paintings that I have here. And if you are in Arizona, first Friday of every month, we do first Friday in Phoenix. And we have art tours, we have open galleries, and all kinds of fun art events. Well, tonight is the first Friday of the month, May 1st. So this is my uh, own little contribution to first Friday, virtually, of course. So I want to go through some of the paintings that I have on the walls of my own home that I created for my own home. And I just was thinking, I was getting really creative and was thinking how else can I share my art during this time when we're all at home. So I thought I'll do a simple little fun art tour of my own home. So we're going to start with this one right here. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is actually made in California. I made this uh, for our last home when we were living in California. And this one has quite a story behind it. This is called Presence. And it's 40 inches by 48 inches. So um, I'll give you the cliff notes to how this started. This started one Friday night. We had recently moved to California and we had friends visiting us, staying with us, and we decided to do a painting. My friend and I, we both love, love painting, and we both happen to be obsessed with gold spray paint. So it all started with one canvas. I think we, we whited it out with white spray paint, and then we just added this strip of gold spray paint. Now, we did have a ton of fun, but that's about as far as we got with the painting that night. And so it was like many, many weeks before I actually went back and touched this painting again. Now, there's a lot of texture in here. I know it's gonna be hard to tell on video, but that is the beauty of repurposing. And if you're not familiar with what I do at Refashioned Art, everything is upcycled. So I create art using repurposed materials. So this was another canvas that had something else on it, and um, I think it was oil. This was one of yours, Ed. I think, and you were using a lot of oil. So there was a lot of texture that was that had already lived on the painting, and I love when you paint over a canvas, and that extra texture, it kind of like comes through. It adds dimension and a lot of interest. So anyhow, eventually I got to finishing the painting at the time. I was painting in our yard outside. It was not ideal at all. And I ended up using like things like sticks and all kinds of, I mean, literally what else, whatever I could pick up on the ground. I think I used a rock to throw some of these uh, like strips of paint, but eventually I finished it. It was like months time and this was actually made to fill the space above our fireplace in that home. It's a, it was a really big space and I knew I wanted a painting to fill that space. So I knew it had to be a lot bigger than what the canvas size was because I wanted to fill the space so I thought I'll have it framed. There was an art gallery and an art gallery slash antique dealer that was um, in Oakland. And I just decided, I don't know why I had the thought, I thought I'm gonna go down there and just see if they could frame this. I knew they did framing, knew nothing about them. And so I meet this really, um, this old kind of gruff guy. And he was really actually very sweet and endearing. And he actually gave me a lot of really good advice. He was a lifelong artist himself. And so I talked to him a little bit about my style and the uh, home and our decor. And so he goes into a room at his antique store, a room of like hundreds of frames that he just collected, vintage frames, antique frames. And he comes out with this one. This is the first one he pulled out. And I nearly died because this was exactly what I had in mind for this painting, exactly. I love that juxtaposition of something a little bit more modern and, you know, kind of sparse with something that's very vintage. Hey, video time, sorry, excuse the 
dogs. They have no manners at all, especially no video etiquette. You guys, come on. So I just love that juxtaposition of you know the more modern painting with the old. So it's like new, old, and a little more minimalist, edgy, with something very ornate. So anyhow, this guy somehow read my mind exactly what he came up, came up with, and then he goes, well, that's the first battle. Now it has to fit. And what are the chances? It fit, like perfect fit. So there you go. He charged me like $160. I mean, the most ridiculously low price. I almost, I mean, I had to hold my breath because I, I mean, that's a major deal for this antique frame with this painting. So anyhow, this is presents. Love this painting. And it just happened to go great in this foyer. Actually, it was made for this foyer more so than that fireplace in our last house. So anyhow, that's that. Um, and a lot of my paintings that I do, for some reason, uh, I really like that style, little gold, and the blue strips. Time for a sip. Sip break. Okay, so we're gonna move on over here. And again, I wanna keep this short and sweet. So I'm just gonna do maybe four or five paintings. I know no one wants to sit here all night and spend their happy hour necessarily listening to me. <laughs> and of course my husband, who is a fine cameraman but has no aspirations to be a cameraman. Um, but he's doing a fine job. He's here, he showed up. But I know he doesn't want to spend his happy hour filming me. So this here, I want to just point this out. This is not one of my paintings, but one of our favorites. This was a gift from a friend, um, Don Hasselback. He's an artist, obviously. It is spectacular. He sent us this painting when we moved into this house. He had no idea what our home looked like, and it is like a perfect fit in here. And this wall, this little nook, is the perfect spot. So again, this is not my painting, but I just want to point out something else that I have in my home. I love this, and um, that is only one of four paintings in this whole place that I did not do. Everything else I did, I'm a real DIY girl. <laughs> so we're gonna move on to the next one here. So this room is kind of like my husband's men's room. This is where he sits and reads and does, you know, eats snacks and stuff. So um, I had another painting here recently and it was also a square. He loved that painting. Interestingly, that's now on display at Renaissance Square, which is a building in downtown Phoenix. Um, it is on display showing there, and it actually is for sale now. So, this space was like for a short time. My friend, Nancy Pendleton, she's a well-established artist here. She was getting rid of this canvas, and it could not have come at a more perfect time because it, it's also square, like the last one was, perfectly fills the space and I needed a new project. So I thought, this, whatever I'm gonna do is gonna go right here. And the interesting thing about a lot of things I do, I had a much different vision for what I was going to create for this space, and once I got into it, it just took on a whole new direction of its own. Um, so this was supposed to be something totally different. There are many, many, many layers of paint on this canvas. So I call this exhale because that's what it felt like when I was doing it. Uh, it just felt like an exhale and it felt really good. And of course this was early on in our stay at home quarantine time. And you know, I've been doing a lot of like throwing paint, a lot of splatter paint type styles. And I think it's probably representative of how I'm feeling inside, which is like everything is kind of chaos on the outside. The world seems kind of like a mess, and so I think I tend to express those feelings and undertones on my canvases. So this is called Exhale. It's 48 inches by 48 inches, and I think it actually goes really well in here. Um, I'm happy it turned out differently than I originally planned because the colors um, pull from the other colors in the room in a much nicer way than what I had in mind. And you like it, right? And this is yes, love here it. to stay, love right? It, love it. Okay, so exhale. Um, yeah, that's one of the newest paintings that I've done for our home. 
So another one I want to point out, this one was actually a collaborative effort between my husband and I. My husband started painting, um, I don't know, 2001, <laughs> 2002. I don't laugh, I mean, you have real, we have a couple pieces that he did that I have framed and hung in here because they really are that good. Um, <laughs> just different style though than what I would do. So this one here is called Welcome. Ed, is that right? That's right, yeah. It, Ed named it Welcome. And so this was actually done probably like 2002. Long time ago. Yes. Very long time ago. And it was actually not until we moved here. Um, this had moved all over the country with us, many moves. And I just, you know, it had been probably boxed and wrapped for a couple of those moves maybe. But I thought um, I wanted to embellish it a little bit. So I added the text. Je t'aime. I am in love with French culture, so I do use a lot of French words. And I just added some of the little drips. I don't know, I just thought I needed to make it a little more edgy for what it was. But I love these colors. I never use color like this, but Ed really likes bright colors. This was an oil painting, so um, a whole nother thing. And I have this framed here locally. I want to tell you about a fabulous framer in Phoenix. Um, it's, it, they're in Arcadia Frame and Works. They do custom framing and they're just awesome. They're quick, their prices are quite decent, but they also have a remnant area where they take remnants, framing remnants that would have been thrown away and they make custom frames out of them. So this, this frame was made out of framing remnants. And so I love this frame. This is exactly what I wanted. It's a little bit different of a style for me, but I just love the fact that I was rescuing this, you know, these remnants from maybe ending up in landfill. And that's the whole point of refashioned art, just to reduce waste and, you know, conserve resources. So using something that already exists. That is collaborative effort, welcome. And I have no idea what the size is on this. Do you know, Ed? I don't. No, okay. I'm sure no one cares. <laughs> so any questions, guys, if you have any questions or any comments, then please share in the comments or, you know, even better, use that question mark button that's at the bottom of your screen because your question will pop right up. Sometimes in the comments, things get lost. But if you have a question or a comment, please fire away. All right, so where are we at for time? 15. We're at 15 minutes, awesome. All right, we're gonna move out of the men's room. And by the way, I just wanna share that in addition to my art, I am super, super passionate about sustainability in fashion. The dress I'm wearing, this was a Goodwill find and it is a vintage Betsy Johnson. I absolutely love this dress. It feels amazing. And um, what else? I'm wearing one of my favorite rings. This is an antique from the Paris Free Market. I wear it all the time. It just feels so good. And then my shoes are, I forget who makes these. I think it's maybe, I don't know, Stuart Whiteson maybe, but these are from my sister's closet, which if you are looking to shop, highly recommend my sister's closet, a fabulous consignment shop here in Arizona. They have a few locations, but they did open back up today. So. That is kind of exciting. All right, so moving on, maybe one or two more. I really don't want to talk more than like 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, so this one here is called Bijou Rouge, and this was also something I, this was also a Goodwill find. I had found this painting at Goodwill, and what I actually did was I taped off the frame, it's got a very thin brass frame, which I love. I clearly, I love gold. I love gold tones of any sort. So when I saw this, I was so, so thrilled to grab it. Um, so yeah, I taped off the frame and then I painted over the inside. So this um, right here is a mix of things. I used some oil, I used some spray paint, I used some house paint. I used some acrylic. So again, this is one of those things, it just kind of took, off a, took on a life of its own once I got into it. 
And a lot of this texture has like some awesome texture. And a lot of this, like these lines, that was there. So this is part of the beauty of upcycling and repurposing art that already exists. Like if you go to Goodwill or another thrift store and pick up some of their art, what I love is the texture that already existed on this painting. And then when you paint over it, it just gives so much dimension. But you know what? A lot less work. If I were to create this, all of this texture, these lines on my own, that would have taken a ton more time. So just a plug for upcycling and sustainable art, guys. In some ways, it does make things more difficult, but um, in some ways, it makes it more fun and easier and for sure way more interesting. So this is Bijou Rouge, and this is 40 inches by 50 inches. And again, I don't have a tendency to use that much color, but my husband loves red. I thought, you know, our whole house is white. All the furniture is quite neutral, tones of grays and whites, and I thought, I'm gonna do something bold. So for me, this is like out of my comfort zone and love this frame, but fabulous find from Goodwill that I repurposed, so highly recommend. And again, part of why I'm doing this and part of why I'm sharing the live demos that I've been doing from my studio, I know they look horrible, I know the acoustics are horrible, the lighting's horrible, but I'm doing it anyway because it's really important for me to share part of the process because what I do is nothing special. Everybody can do this, and I really wanna encourage people to try this at home. It feels really good to have something that you created on your own, hanging on the walls of your own home. So I really wanna encourage people, create your own art. It's just part of this whole way of creating a stylish lifestyle for yourself. And of course, repurposing things that already exist. I mean, you might have a piece of art in your home that just looks kind of tired, or maybe it's just been there and you realize, I really don't like that. Well, great opportunity to redo it. Just, you can paint right over it or you can incorporate what's already there. And I think that, you know, all of us with this stay at home quarantine period, I think we're all realizing things about our home space that we really love or that we really don't love. So your environment is like your third skin. If there's something that you don't like, it is gonna eventually wear on you. You might not realize it, but just like with what you wear, it is gonna wear on you. So if you have art in your home or something that, you know, maybe could use a little zhuzhing, maybe try and rework it yourself. So Ed, where are we on time? 20 minutes. We're at 20 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna do one last piece. This was a piece I did when I moved in, when we first moved in, so mm, not quite two years ago. This is called, let me see, this kind of feels like we need a little more light in here, right? Um, this is called Gold Rush. And this was like the ultimate upcycling project. Uh, the base of this is a piece of metal wall art. We had this piece of wall art for so many years. We bought it, I think, when we were living in Atlanta. And we paid a good amount of money for it. So my husband refused to get rid of it. About two moves ago, two homes ago, I was done with this. So we hadn't used this for a while. It had moved around the country with us and kind of sat in a box and um, I've decided, okay, if he's not gonna let me get rid of this thing, then I'm going to make something else out of it that I actually do love and can use. So I took this piece of metal wall art, and then another uh, consequence of moving, there's so much packing paper. I mean, there's so much of that leftover paper. So I used this paper and I, I just, it's hard to even say what I did. It, so much of it just, I go off intuition, but so I intertwined the packing paper with this piece of metal wall art, and then I used some of this metal wire. Who knows where that came from? It was uh, found in my garage, and I just kind of like mushed it all together and molded it into something. I knew I wanted something to go on this wall. I knew I wanted this wall filled. I knew I wanted something abstract, artsy, a little unusual and quirky. And I think I nailed it because I think we can all agree this is definitely unusual. Spray painted the whole thing gold and 
voila, it's done. And it's interesting, it really did perfectly fill the space in the scale that I really was, you know, that I had in mind. So this is called Gold Rush. I don't remember the dimensions offhand, but I don't know, I just love this. And I have a whole bunch of other, like, uh, metal wall art pieces that I'll, you know, I'm just kind of waiting for the inspiration to strike. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but there will be more of these. Actually, I actually have made one. My husband hates it, so it's like in the corner. But there will be more of these. Let me know what you think. Let me know, do you like it? Is it a little too quirky? Is it too off the beaten track? I don't know. I needed something quirky because that's just me. You know, I like the artsy and unusual things and all of the art I do, it's meant to be somewhat, uh, it's meant to have a little bit of a fashionable flair, you know, that modern contemporary, but you know, artsy, like definitely artsy and unusual look. And I think you probably will agree if you're following me here on Instagram that a lot of my stuff is rather unusual, artsy, but with a fashionable edge. So that said, Please DM me if you have any other questions about my process or where I've gotten any of these pieces or where I source any of the pieces that I repurpose. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed your short and sweet little happy hour. I sure did. I hope you enjoyed your cocktail. We'd love to know what you're drinking. I have mum uh, champagne, which is a fabulous winery in Napa, which I really would love to visit right now, but it might be a bit. So thank you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay well. And um, I will see you soon. Hopefully, maybe.